If you or your partner are suffering from slow rendering disorder, then you should know that you're not alone. Many Blender users are actually making a lot of common mistakes in cycles, so let's look at how we can fix them together. Also worth to note that for Black Friday, my products will be on sale on Blender Market, but let's dive into the video. Using volumetrics and blenders can add beautiful atmosphere to your renders as seen on tutorials such as Gleb Alexandrov. However, I see a lot of users just dumping volumetrics into their scene and cranking the settings, and this can ruin your render times. Oftentimes when using volumetrics, you're going for one of two things, either trying to get light rays or you're trying to get that kind of fall off mist look. And we can actually achieve both of these effects without really increasing render times. First, the light rays is actually a tip I learned from the Blender Live cast, which is on their YouTube channel. And with this node setup you see here on the screen, what you can actually do is kind of disable all the light bounces flying around the scene and just render the look of the rays. So this allows you to add light rays to your scene pretty quickly. And then you can control some of the sliders here as well to get different variation on the rays. And next up, you're probably familiar with this, but for new users, if you go to render passes and turn on mist, you can then use this in your compositor setup, normalize it and mix it with colors to give yourself that kind of fog fall off look. And again, this will hardly affect render times. Now, of course, this won't give you all the intricacies of a true volumetric render, but it's gonna get you pretty close. And as you can see, I'm using it here on my short film without increasing render times. Next up is a quick and simple one, is using 4K image textures on everything. So if you don't know how rendering works in cycles, when you hit render, it loads to your CPU and everything builds up the BVH of your scene. Then after that, it kicks it over to your GPU, assuming you have one where it will do the rendering. When it kicks over to that GPU, it's going to be dependent on how much memory you have on your video card. So if you have a smaller or more budget-friendly video card, you're going to run out of memory quite quickly. Image textures are a perfect way to run out of memory quickly. So when should you use 4K textures? For large objects or objects close to the screen. Anything else, you should really be looking at 1000 by 24 textures or even five tile textures if you can get away with it without it looking too fuzzy on screen. Not using adaptive subdivision is another common mistake I see people making. And I think that's because it's been under experimental features forever. So if you come over here to your render settings and drop from supported to experimental on your GPU, now when you add your subdivision, depending on where it's in in the modifier stack, you should see the option to tick adaptive subdivision. What this is going to do is that if you have a displacement map on your object, it is going to adaptively subdivide to best serve that displacement map. I oftentimes see people either sculpting a lot of data or creating incredibly high mesh data or turning their subdivision all the way up so that they can get true displacement maps. But by using adaptive subdivision, you can actually save a lot on time. What if I told you there was a way to render larger scenes than possible on your single computer? Well, then you should quit avoiding render layers. This is something I've mentioned before, but I'm gonna go in a bit more detail on it here. As I mentioned before, your CPU loads your scene and kicks it over to your GPU where you can easily run out of memory on lower end cards. A way to bypass that is to break up how you render your scene and then piece it back together. And Blender makes it quite simple. Up here under the filters tab, you can turn on various options that will help with this. You have ones that will make it so that your objects produce indirect lighting, ones that have holdouts, and you can use these to turn off elements within your scene and render certain layers. So what you would do is create a new render layer up here, and then you would toggle on and off the collections and their visibility based on what was needed per layer so that you can break it up into multiple layers. And then when you come over here in the compositor, you can create a new render layers node here, and then you can drag that down and then use the mix node and mix those together based off of the alpha and piece your scene back together. Now, one thing that I see that is all too common is being too reliant on AI denoising. AI denoising is amazing, but the more samples you get in before you denoise, the better results you're going to have. And this isn't as crucial on still images, but our AI denoisers currently in Blender do not support temporal denoising, meaning that when it moves from frame to frame, it just decides what's best per frame. And thus, when you play it back as an animation, you will get noise. So ways I encourage to get around this is the simple idea of rendering out some of your layers and reporting them in as 2D objects. This will help drastically reduce the amount of noise that you have. Or you can go the more complicated route and check out this blog post on how they accomplished it in Sprite Fight, where they actually rendered out depth maps of their scenes and then imported image textures to drastically improve their render times and reduce noise. 
Now, this is something I commonly see in sci-fi renders. And what they do is they add emission shaders to elements of their object, and then they use that to kind of light up the scene in a dynamic way. And it looks cool, but the problem is that mesh lights are not optimized for light casting in Blender, and thus they will create noisier and longer render times. Blender's light objects are much more optimized for producing light within a scene. Now, one of my favorite nodes that doesn't get used enough is the light path node. And the reason I love this node is because it saved me so much on render times. We used this earlier with the light ray trick to optimize our light ray, and you can use it to kind of nullify the rendering of certain light rays in your scene that are just gonna add to render times. For example, if you're creating a sci-fi object and you wanna have emissive properties all over this object, you can use this as a mix shader and what that will do is give your objects the look of light emission without actually emitting light and thus saving you quite a bit of time on render time if you don't need that light fall off another little quick tip unnecessary light paths a lot of people will just leave blender at the default settings but you can actually turn down the light paths quite a bit from 12 to 8 which doesn't sound like much but when you're bouncing around thousands of rays in your scene this can drastically reduce the amount of calculations you need to do and save you on render times and honestly going from 12 to 8 and turning down transmissive properties isn't going to affect most scenes yet another little quick tip pay attention to your tile sizes this isn't as big of an issue because now Blender kind of ships with things a little bit more optimized than it used to in the past, but you can look up charts online to determine what tile size is best for your video card. And I recommend using those because it can sometimes improve render times by about 20% in my experience. Thank you so much for tuning in to watch. I'm planning on doing more top 10 mistake videos. Let me know what subjects you'd like to see below. In the meantime, I just wanna shout out one more time that my product is on sale on Black Friday for Blender Market. So check out the link in the description below and thank you for watching. The pack is now on sale to celebrate this new update and will continue through the Blender Market sale for 25% off. So if you'd like to learn more, check it out in the description below.